back to back to back. Science articles have just been published on turning a quantum gas transparent. This phenomenon called polyblocking is extremely interesting and was predicted more than three decades ago, but it had remained elusive until now. So what is polyblocking and why is it so interesting? Let's discuss it. Polyblocking is essentially an application of the poly exclusion principle, which states that two identical fermions cannot be in the same quantum state in the same quantum system at the same time. Where fermions are particles that have a half integer spin as opposed to bosons that have integer spin. Some examples of fermions are electrons or quarks or composite particles like the proton. In atoms, the Fermi exclusion principle limits the number of electrons that can be in a single electron orbital. This is why it's often limited to two such that they can only have a spin up or a spin down electron in that orbital. An extension of the Pauli exclusion principle is that fermions cannot be in the same place and have the same momentum at the same time. If they did this, then they would have the same quantum state and the same quantum system, and this is not allowed. So what would happen if we took a whole lot of fermions and we packed them so densely that they couldn't move anymore and that there was no available states? Would this collective state have an interesting property? Well, this is exactly what these researchers just looked at. In gases, the Pauli exclusion principle normally doesn't come into effect. The particles are so far separated that they can be in the same state because they're not really in the same quantum system. But if we take a gas and we compress it, then all of a sudden these particles that were far apart are so close that they can start to interfere with each other. Now, if we were just to take a gas and compress it, this still wouldn't be an issue. And this is because the gas would be too hot. And when the gas is hot, there's a lot of possible states at higher energies for the gas molecules and atoms to sit in. And while some might have a poly exclusion principle come into effect, globally there won't be a significant number of these. What's interesting if we take one of these compressed gases and then we cool it down so that it's ultra cold, that is near zero Kelvin, suddenly all of these particles fall down into the lowest energy states available and they start to fill up eventually to the point where there's no states to move to unless if there's a serious amount of energy applied to a single particle. As a consequence, you can no longer interact with the particles unless if you give them enough energy to escape all of the other atoms. In this state, the ultra cold gas now prohibits the atoms from moving around for small energy changes. And therefore, only significant changes matter. So then what happens when you start to interact with the ultra cold gas in this state? Well, normally light enters the gas and it bounces around. It's potentially absorbed, it's reflected, and maybe it gets all the way through, through some complex trajectory. But this is only if the light actually interacts with the particles. I mean, you can think of a foggy day. When you shine a light into a fog, the light interacts with all the particles in the fog, all the water molecules. And instead of illuminating out fast where you are, you illuminate the air itself. Well, in an ultra cold gas, this doesn't happen. The light shines straight through. It doesn't interact with any of the atoms. Well, at least in principle, when an atom interacts with light, it takes some energy from that light, at least temporarily. And this requires it to go into a different energy state. But if there's no state available, if it's forbidden to make this transition, then it can't absorb the light to begin with and the light just goes straight through. Thus, when cooling down one of these condensed gases, all of a sudden at some transition, the light will start to pass through and the gas will become transparent. To observe this effect, three groups of scientists looked at three different ultra cold gases, one made from lithium atoms, one made from strontium atoms, and another made from potassium atoms. They were able to show that they could reduce the scattering by 37% indicating that some of these atoms were no longer interacting with the light. Now this makes some sense that it's not 100% because there's a spectrum of energy states within the gas. And while the lower energy states have now got a lot of forbidden transitions, still the higher energy atoms can transition to higher again because they are not forbidden anymore. So you never expect in a gas like this that you would have 100% of the atoms no longer interacting. While this is an initial demonstration, some very interesting applications of a gas like this. 
One example given by a lead researcher on one of these projects is, imagine I take an excited atom from somewhere else and I place it into a Fermi sea of atoms. When it tries to come back down from an excited state, there's nowhere for it to go. So the lifetime of that state is artificially enhanced. As such, we could start to imagine embedding quantum systems to enhance their lifetimes and use this for applications. One application could be in quantum computing, where we could now start to generate qubits in ultra cold gases that have an incredibly long lifetime. Either way, I'm sure we'll see a lot more about this topic in the future. Thanks for watching. Have fun. See you next time.